Let's get scratching. We got an explosive broadcast coming to you. Listen up. Sega games, just keep playing them. Sega! We're back. It's the Sega Bit Swing Report Show. Get ready for Sega interviews and news with George and Barry. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Yu Suzuki. Next comes the bounce. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello and welcome to episode 79 of the Sega Bit Swing and Report Show. I'm Barry, with me is George. Hello everyone. And this is the podcast that I never thought I would be hosting. Uh, co-hosting. Apologies, George. Um, this is our Shenmue 3 discussion. Shenmue 3 uh, was announced at E3 on the Sony stage by Yu Suzuki. Well, he came out after it was announced, but uh, come on, people are going to remember him over some Sony suit. Um, and the Kickstarter launched, and it has since been funded uh, two million which some think is a little low, but uh, that's what we're going to talk about here. Um, before we get into it, though, uh, I want to ask, this isn't one of the questions that we had, where were you when you heard the news, George? And what ran through your head? I was, uh, in, my, uh, no, I was in my car in, on the phone watching it, uh, and I got, it was a little surprising, I mean, considering everything, you know? Like, well, there was rumors, you know, beforehand. But, like, every year there's rumors. Like, I have to put up with the rumors every year and everybody telling me how, like, it's going to happen this year because this, this, and that. And uh, I was actually very surprised that it actually happened. I I was surprised it was Shimmy 3. I thought it was going to be maybe, like, Shimmy 1 HD uh, edition or something. Yeah. Especially after they announced the Final Fantasy VII remake. Very surprising that they went straight for 3. Yeah, I was. How about you? I was. Um, well, Sunday night I was going to go see uh, Jurassic World, but it was sold out. So we bought tickets for Monday night, and we went to go see that. And so I knew that there was the Sony conference going on, and as we discussed before the the conference, there were inklings that something Shenmue was going to happen. And so I, I kept kind of checking my phone, and then I started to see retweets for. Uh, when you tweeted out that Shenmue 3 was happening. And at that very moment when I took my phone out to look at it, the uh, spoiler alert for Jurassic World, if you haven't seen it, the T-Rex appeared to fight the, um, the, the other dinosaur. So it was, kind of, <laughs> it was kind of fitting to have like the T-Rex appear and do his big mighty roar as soon as my phone tweeted uh, that uh, Shenmue 3 was happening. And then on top of that, the Blackhawks, one and since I live in Chicago, that means that everyone was like celebrating and like yelling all night. But I felt like I, I kind of pretended that they were actually celebrating Shenmue three, which uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I would have done yeah. too. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm surprised uh, how like I don't know people care, like I at least pretended to care about the news. I'm not saying they didn't care, you know. Yeah. But I'm saying like my local news was like talking about it, like, and of course they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They just write, you know, read whatever's on the written on the thing. I just find it weird that they didn't even talk about Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> I thought that would have been more popular, I guess. Who cares? Shenmue. It's three. Yeah. It's not a remake. It's finally finishing. And that's actually the first, a billion years. The first point that you brought up for uh, our discussion points on this Shenmue 3 discussion. Um, did you think that Shenmue 3 was going to be shown at the Sony E3 press conference, and as we just said, we we both did. What were the hints, George? What what tipped you off? Well, I think there was a lot of things. It was like, um, well, there was uh, there's rumors people talking about how uh, Yu Suzuki has been working with Sony, and I think Sony was trying to be more Japanese and uh, I guess bring games that people wanted. And then um, the, the other one was um, that the third party relations team mm-hmm. was like uh following uh yuzuki all randomly before uh e3 and then yuzuki coming back on twitter before e3 and then he posted that um uh, that forklift yeah 
And then he said that he, they, he spotted it at E3. That was kind of all that, like, you know, led up to it. Yeah. So there were there were hints. We knew something Shenmue related was going to happen. And uh, we assumed it would be the Sony press conference because you didn't see, you know, like Microsoft people following Suzuki. Um, some fans yeah. were speculating it was just that Suzuki was on Twitter. A lot of people just started following him. And it just happened to be that a few Sony people followed him at the same time. And, you know, maybe it was like, oh, one Sony guy follows, he follows that Sony guy, so he sees, he's, oh, Sh- Yu Suzuki's on Twitter, I'll follow just like my Sony buddy did. But, um, no, we were we were accurate in guessing it was Shenmue-related. What surprised us was that it was Shenmue 3. Um, yeah, for sure. So we talked about where we were, uh, but what what was the first thought that went through your head when you heard that it was launching as a Kickstarter? Uh... uh a little like uh, hesitated because technically if they launch a Kickstarter, it's not like it's coming out and it's coming to you. It's more like give us money and hopefully it happens. Like I didn't, I don't know. I always thought kind of like uh, I mean you know when Shim, you know when Shimu came out. I mean it, it it had hype behind it. Yeah. But I remember when it came out, a lot of people that I knew did not like the game because it was like not action. I think Yu Suzuki even talked about it like. Uh, just recently, because of the Kickstarter, about how when he designed Shimu, it was about like uh, violence. You, violence is used like only when he needs he needs it, not just for entertainment. Yeah. And uh, Shimu one definitely didn't have much action, I guess. And a lot of people that I knew did not like that. So I always assumed that it was like, I guess more of a cult game. Yeah. But when they announced the Shimu three thing and you saw that funding go up, it was definitely more of a mainstream. Uh, Appeal for sure. Right, and um, you, you mentioned that first game. There was a, a figure thrown around. What, what was it? It was something having to do with for Shenmue 1 to make a profit, every Dreamcast owner would have to buy two copies. Is that accurate? That's that's what people say, but I don't know. I, nobody's ever been able to pull the quote, but if, uh, if it's true, like... Uh, if it's true, I mean, you got to think about it. I mean, this is coming off of Virtual Fighter, you know? When Virtual Fighter came out, yeah. that thing literally sold the, the the Saturn in Japan and made it, like, mainstream in Japan. It sold, like, everybody that had a Saturn had Virtual Fighter copy. Well, uh, you, so I'm assuming that that's the that was the plan for Shimu, right? Yeah. Uh, everybody that bought a Dreamcast had it, and people bought a Dreamcast is for it. I bring that up just because, you know, you look at the Kickstarter, it's impressive that at, at the moment of our recording this... They've hit three million three hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars, and that's a lot. However, the the amount of backers it's only forty two thousand. And when you if you were to translate that to let's say first day sales, like let's say Shenmue quote unquote went on sale and these people are throwing their money at it, that's not a that's not a lot of people, you know. Yeah, but that's also the problem with like Kickstarter. Like people don't want to like invest in something that's not going to come out probably for three years yeah. so like that's why i don't like when people say oh look at how well this kickstarter did uh this publisher is going to be angry that they didn't do it but it's like it doesn't really relate to like real world sales i guess yeah. we have to wait until the game comes out and see how it does but i have a feeling it's going to do really well yeah um regarding my thoughts uh when i first heard it launching as a kickstarter um I guess I felt the same way I kind of do now. It's it's both excitement, but it's I'm not completely there just because, like you said, it's 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 almost like an announcement of an announcement. They're saying you know the game's happening, and then when they hit that two million, they were like, oh, the game's definitely happening. But it still feels like the Shenmue that we could get at the three million mark isn't that yeah. big of a game. I mean they've they've mentioned, and we'll get to this later on too. But you know just the thought going through my head when I first watched that Kickstarter video was they have three villages they want to put in the game at least. And right now we're just scratching the surface of the first village. Now I would, I would hate to see the the Kickstarter get funded at 5 million and we get the first village is awesome. And then we either just don't get the other two or we get them, but they're very stripped down like that. No, that would that suck. would suck. That would be like because sh- you know Shenmue Three is broken down by chapters, even though they don't mention that in the games themselves. People do know that uh, Shenmue One was one chapter, which did make for a full game. So we could conceivably see a Shenmue Three that covers one chapter, but I don't want that. 
after so much waiting, I, really don't want that. I want I want a Shenmue three that at least spans two or three chapters, if not just completes the series. Because um, uh, he did say in 2014 that it was going to be three more games ending with a Shenmue five, but at at the time of 2014 he was saying I, I could end it at four, but right now I think he just needs to go all in, get the money he needs, and complete the game. I think a trilogy is a much better number, too, than uh, a Shenmue 4. four. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to tell you, um, which pacing did you like better? One, which was more slower and drawn out, or two, where it's just like they try to cram in like three chapters into one game? I I think story-wise and, and feeling-wise, I like Shenmue 1. Gameplay-wise, I like Shenmue 2. I think Shen. I think yeah. if, they, if they had the ability, to, I think more people would have bought the sequel or been more, I don't know, satisfied with the ending. Yeah. If Shimmy One ended with like uh, Shimmy Two Chapter Two or whatever, where you're on the building. Yeah. Yeah. Because like it just felt like oh you're you're on a ship now now the real adventure begins all right yeah well I guess I'll wait for the next game. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was gonna say um. You want to talk about the early models they showed off at E3? Yeah, um, when the uh, live on stage, they showed a different trailer from what you get on the Kickstarter. Um, so I, I can't, rem- I haven't watched that trailer in the past few days, but from what I remember, it does show uh, early footage of the game. And the models, I mean, I think the environments look nice, though. Then again, I, f- I feel like now in 2015. Uh, outdoor environments they just don't wow you anymore you know like i i've played uh on ios they have a an unreal i think it's unreal engine um demo called epic citadel and it shows you this this like castle and these like forests you can walk through and that was impressive and i'm looking at this you know shenmue footage and it's it still looks impressive but the fact that i could equate it with unreal footage on an iphone doesn't you get what I mean? I I feel like the yeah I I thought I I just thought they were like uh, holder assets, which I think that's what's happening now. That way I'm looking at other stuff. Yeah. But uh, we don't. I, I mean, yeah. But what do you think about the quality of them? So you, you're saying they're like can't match your phone? <laughs> Not so much that. I'm just saying that I, I feel like 3D graphics don't. It's very difficult to wow people with video games nowadays. Um, I have to agree for sure. Especially when it, I think nature settings, you you do have that advantage. For example, I I played a demo of Pikmin three not too long ago. I think three. That's the Wii U one, and I was just yeah, I was amazed by the the light coming through the leaves and things like that. And of course, Pikmin has the advantage of really zooming in and showing uh, you know, everything in a much smaller setting. Um. So maybe Shenmue 3, if the final game in in the wilderness is really able to uh, give us these amazing little, almost like if you were on vacation and you're just laying by a stream and you're just focusing on all the the beautiful things going on around you, if they can nail that, I think that would be really cool. I I don't think there's any way that they can really wow us, though, graphically. Um, As for the models, as we've seen, the ones in the trailer footage... Are early because people have said Rio doesn't look like Rio. What are, what are your thoughts on that? It, same thing. It feels like they got like a generic model off the, like the Unreal Store and they just added like uh, Shimu items. I mean uh, Ryu items to him. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. But so. But yeah, like you said, it's in development and that's not the final model and that's already been 100% uh, confirmed. Yeah. Because uh, they showed a new model off at uh, the Famitsu magazine. Mm-hmm. They showed off the new uh, Ryu model. What do you think about it? I, I think that one definitely looks better than the um, what we've seen in the early Shenmue 3 clips. Um, though it's hard for me to say it looks better than the first two games just because I feel like the first two games, I'm, I've seen that, that model for so many years that even though it's a little lower in polygons, you know, it, it has its charm to it. I, I think especially with the eyes... They haven't nailed Rio's eyes yet for me. It sounds weird. He, he has like these, he has like these weird like uh, I'm angry and sad at the same time look on his face all the time. Yeah, now he looks a little calm. Yeah, and uh, they also have these like weird like uh, 
he looked really, really white, I guess. Yeah, I don't know if that's the lighting, you know, next generation lighting. But in the, the earlier games, it was like he was kind of like tan and it looked like they like hand brushed like uh, textures onto him, you know, like uh, like the little sh- shadowing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Like if you look at it, it looks different. I don't know. I can't put my finger on it, though. It might be that daylight thing. Um, like, for example, I do know that this is kind of off topic, but I remember when uh, the Star Wars Episode Four came out and the special edition, they put the new Jabba in there and people said his color looks off. But the weird thing is, is they actually matched the color to the original model. The difference was that Jabba has always been in darkness. And the moment they put him in this bright light, he looked completely different. So oh, okay. it, it could just be a case of, and Rio's Japanese too. I mean, supposed to be. So, yeah. Uh, so I just say that because every time I play these games, or like it's like, oh, I'm gonna play Street Fighter, and it's like that's a Japanese guy, and it's like doesn't look Japanese, yeah. but all right. Yeah. So when people say, "Boy, they really whitewashed Rio," I'm like, well, I don't know what you mean by that. They definitely gave him lighter skin, but I don't, I don't know if that's the proper term. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's whitewashing. It's not like he's like American now. Either. Yeah. <laughs> Though, how about those so, voices in those early trailers? Those English voices. Rio, can you? I'm assuming that Yuzuzuki picked him out himself. Can you jump? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to jump on the rocks? Yeah. Jump with me, Rio. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, I'm hoping that's not the voice actor. People were all like, "Oh, we need Corey. Uh, what's his name? Corey Marshall." Yeah. The original. Is that his name? Yeah. Um. Yeah. People are like, we need him back, we need him back, and I'm like, I don't know, dude, like, I don't think the new one's good, and I don't think he was that great either, and I, I don't know, it just... I don't know. He obviously, I mean, everybody knows he kind of felt a little stiff. I grew, I grew up with the, I mean, both of us, we grew up with the English voices yeah. for the first game, we became very attached to them, but when you play two, you suddenly realize that a whole goofy layer gets removed when you have the Japanese voices. No longer are you making fun of the dialogue. Instead, you're following the story. Um, and I will say the voice act, the English voice acting in Shenmue 2 for the Xbox is a lot better. And we, we had Lisa Wilkerson on uh, not too long ago who did the voice of Joy. And she, you know, I think she did a fantastic job. Um, though I, I hesitate to, um, I guess, uh, think that, we're going to have English voices for this game because that's going to be a whole new budget. Imagine budgeting for two voice casts. It's, I have a feeling it's going to be one of the stretch goals later on. It could on, be, but, um, yeah. I was going to say, uh, I would rather them just, well, I'd rather them do the Japanese voice work and, like, uh, make everybody actually be what they are. Like, what character's Chinese? He spe- He actually, the voice actor speaks in Chinese. True. And, and they just get really good Japanese, Chinese, and there's an American and an American voice actor. And, like, just focus on getting their, like, native languages down and subtitling it. How funny. Wh- and don't, I mean, yeah. I don't think, I think we, we've, we like, gaming is far enough where they accept uh, something that's in its native language, you know? Yeah, uh, two points on that. How, first off, how funny was it that in Shenmue 2, or Shenmue 1 in Japanese, it's completely, like, legitimate but then when he goes to china it's like they're speaking japanese so it kind of ruins the legitimacy um and also speaking of people speaking their native languages binary domain didn't that that game did that you had a japanese guy speaking Uh, japanese english yeah 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 Yeah, that did it um i I wish they am am two games that really don't do it like it looks like they only go american and japanese especially when you play like um Virtual Fighter, you'll have like a like a Mexican wrestler and he's like talking English, <laughs> and then you'll have like a Chinese character and he's you know speaking Japanese. Yeah. So that that game is only like Japanese or American, nothing else exists. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna so, I'm gonna get a sound uh, yeah, uh, and just have the Rio. Yeah. It probably cost more though. Yeah. 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 But I think it'd be cool. Hmm. Um. Uh, let me see. Oh, we're going to talk about the uh, the rewards and the stretch goals. What are your thoughts? No, I was going to say, oh, what yeah. do you think? Uh, the, no, the next topic is about uh, the Kickstarter success. Oh, of course. Uh, and the, did you expect it to be funded in like a day? I did not. No. Really? I like right now. Well, <sighs> just because like right when I got on, it was like they announced it, and I went 
checked the Kickstarter and it was like, oh, 35,000 already. I was like, what the fuck? I didn't expect like, the the super expensive tiers to sell out so quickly. Neither did I, but uh, are you surprised that somebody paid ten thousand dollars for to, just for dinner with you? Zuzuki? Well, one of them was the um, the uh, Pulse Man. Uh, isn't he from Game Freak? Developer. Yeah, I think the guy that uh, the, the the guy that does the illustrations for Pokemon. Yeah, how awesome would that be if they actually said, "Oh, the dinners for they're all going to go as a group," and then you're paying ten thousand, but at least you get to have dinner with two game developers. That would be kind of cool. That's true. <laughs> That is pretty um, true. But I, and then he also sold his jacket that they use for press events and you know early Shimu days. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I, I would have loved that, but I didn't have ten thousand dollars. You know. Yeah, but I, I mean, this kind of jumps ahead, but um, I did think they should add more ten thousand dollar tiers. They really should because if people are so eager to to drop that money, then. Why not? Don't limit it to four that sell out in the first day. You know, put put twenty up there, fifty, whatever. You just, they should have put more dinners. I mean, yeah. it's not really that hard to have a dinner with the developer. Yeah, and or you could even do a, ten, a five thousand dollar one and say uh, you get a one hour conversation with Yu Suzuki over Skype with a translator. Damn. Yeah. Man, that'd be pretty good. Yeah. I would love to pay that, but I mean, and then it'd be kind of like sleazy though. It's like. So to promote your game, you're charging people to pay to interview. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But uh, I wish he had more. I'm sure he has a lot of shimmy memorabilia he could put on. Oh, for sure. But uh, yeah, I didn't expect it to be uh, done. Well, I guess I, at first, when I first heard it, I was like, it's not going to be done anytime soon. But when I looked at it, I was like, holy crap, it just keeps on like climbing and climbing and climbing right away. Yeah, I guess so. I'm. I mean, we've dealt with. Sh- well, here's the thing: we're Shenmue fans. We've, we've. You bought? Did you buy the game on release? Uh, pretty close to release, like the release window. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I bought it. I think I bought it day of, and I missed out on the limited edition because like Target wasn't carrying it or something funny. But you know, we're. we're- but you, people had to understand too that like when this game came out, it was like uh, the most like hyped Dreamcast game, I guess. Oh hell yeah! I mean, I guess what I'm so- trying to get across is we we've. We both are not uh, pretenders. We we were there when it was being hyped. We rode the wave of hype. We bought the games. We supported it. So when I say this, you know, I, I don't mean it to, um, I guess, uh, belittle or be mean to to fellow fans. But I, I feel like there's there's Shenmue fans, and then there's like Shenmue fans who are just like insane. And some of them are insane positively. Some of them are insane uh, negatively. And I, <laughs> I felt like, you know, in dealing with um, the fan base, even though I am a part of it, there were some where I, I really had to question their legitimacy. People would be like, oh, fuck this. If there's a Shenmue 3, I'm, I'm dropping half a mil, you know, or something like that. Um, I never really bought that. But the fact that we have these $10,000 tiers selling out so quickly, now now I believe that there are some super crazy fans out there who will drop $10,000. You believe the fucking uh, those uh, those people that are like, I'll, f- I'll fucking kill my family. If <laughs> I, I don't out. know about I'll that. Sacrifice the blood. But that's like that's like for an average person, that's like half to a third of your salary for a year. That's a lot of money. I wonder who bought that jacket and what they're gonna do with it. I don't know. Maybe cut it up live on YouTube and sell the scraps. I have. I, I think somebody on Neo Gas said they're the ones that bought it. But no, anyone. I wouldn't even say, doubt that. Anyone could say that. Neo. Ne- Neil Gap has like a rabid uh, Shimu fan base. Yeah, but I mean, you get what you get what I'm saying though. Like there, I, I felt like there were sometimes people who were just a lot of talk, and I couldn't really believe both the uh, uh, lengths that they claimed that they would go to for a Shenmue three. But um, the fact that these pledges filled out uh, proves me wrong. <laughs> At least for the ones, you know, I, I don't know if that covers everyone, but uh, they're out there. Got. Yeah, it's uh, they're doing, they did really good, and um, I yeah, I'm assuming they're gonna add more tiers because they already added like a three thousand dollar tier for a replica jacket. Well, let's talk about the and rewards. I'm gonna be on, and I'm gonna be honest with you, that replica jacket looks really nice, but I don't have, I'm not gonna spend three thousand dollars on a replica jacket. No, and um, I mean yeah, let's let's talk about those rewards. Talking about the replica jacket, um, I did notice that insert coins tees kind of, I think that kind of bothered them. 
I think they thought they kind of cornered the market on uh, jackets, Shenmue jackets. Yeah, but they need to calm down. I mean, their jacket is like, what, $110, and theirs is $3,000? Yeah. There's a big difference right there. I mean, to be fair, the 3000 tier does also include... Um, the game. It includes the $500 reward, which is all the capsules. And if I'm reading this right, does does the $500 reward... It's like, if you'd get the 3000 you also get the 500 and the 300. You get all of it yeah. from the bottom. So you get yeah. you get a shitload of stuff. You get a signed Kickstarter edition. You get all the toys. You get a physical CD and art book. So it's it's a nice package. Um, I don't know if I'd I don't have three thousand dollars to spend. I don't think I would spend three thousand dollars. Can it. you imagine trying to justify that to your wife? She would be very <sighs> not happy. Probably. Speaking of that, I feel like a lot of people are in in one month's time are going to be justifying. Trying to justify things to their uh, significant others and uh, their family. I, like I said about those ten thousand dollar folks, I would not be surprised if at least one or two of them are putting themselves in debt for to get the the dinner up. I think they're putting the pledge in, and right now they're scrambling to find a credit card or credit cards that can cover that, and they're just going to pay it off for I, the rest of their life. I also think it's a uh, pretty uh, funny that uh, like. Can you imagine if they like buy the dinner and stuff, and then like they have to fly and pay oh, the Lord. fucking bill for uh, Yuzuzuki? <laughs> Yuzuzuki's like, I have to go to the bathroom, and he doesn't come back. And then the, <laughs> the bill comes, and then you're all like, you're looking around, you're like, I, I guess I'll take it. It's like he got the <laughs> three hundred year old, Ferrari. he got the three hundred year old fermented eggs. Come on, those are expensive. I know, <laughs> but uh, see, that's the uh, it's gonna be interesting. I hope. Uh, did, did you see the freaking uh, the video they they posted on uh, on uh, on Kickstarter? Which I don't know if it was on Kickstarter. Which one? They did an interview with him and he was like bumping Tupac. Oh man. It was, you have to see. I'll it. have to but see anyway, that. Uh, what are your thoughts on the rewards? I, outside of uh, I think the the gap is too big. I think, for example, you don't get anything physical until sixty dollars, and it's only the PC copy. Um, I feel like the one hundred dollar reward really should have the art book and CD, physical art book and CD. Um, but you get the trial version, dude. Because yeah, I know, right? I mean, that's cool, but it isn't until 120 that you get a one random toy capsule or capsule toy. And they don't even show you. They don't even show you what like the three. What it's actually going to look yeah, like, like could, a 3D model. It could it. look awesome. It could look crappy. That's the problem. Um, and then you get to 160, and it's a lot of digital rewards. Like even at 160, I'd think, oh, okay, you get me the real art book, the real illustration. You get a T-shirt, and then you get digital rewards. I mean, you know, I'm, I hate digital rewards, dude. I do too, because you know that art book's gonna go up uh, on every forum as soon as it gets released. It's a PDF. That's all it is. Yeah. I, I mean, I. Wait, so the art book isn't a physical art book? It's a fucking PDF file. The the art book is not. Real until 175. 175 gets you the printed art book curated by Yu Suzuki. He hasn't even signed it yet. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like I, I'd love the like I would love the like why is he like why would somebody like charge so much money for like a printed copy like oh I'm gonna write my name on it that'd be two hundred over two hundred dollars <laughs> yeah. more please. Uh, well let's go through these. 250 gets you an illustration, a backer only. Technique scroll, so that's digital. And then the option to skin change Rio's jacket. That's kind of cool, but then again, you have to consider this is a P on the PC game, people are going to figure out how to mod that anyway. That's just kind yeah. of like a mod. And then the physical CD soundtrack. So you finally get the art book and the physical CD soundtrack at $250. Um, 300 So is the illustration like a... a, a hand-drawn illustration or is it like uh i would hope oh this is a sketch and we printed a bunch of copies of it and you're getting one i would hope it's an illustration though you don't get the you don't get a yu suzuki autograph until the 300 hundred dollar level um yeah which i yeah personally i think that's the even though it's 300 dollars, i think that's the best one just because you get you get the art book, you get the physical game, you get Yu Suzuki's autograph, you get the digital rewards, you get the physical rewards. But then it jumps from 300 to 500, which gives you those all the capsule toys. So originally you were getting one random capsule toy. Now you're getting three capsule toys. So for $200 more, they they add only three capsule toys. And I mean, I sound so like you, I sound like I'm complaining, but really I 
I just feel like they should take some of those and just shift them down. I feel like at least at the hundred dollar level, give us a little something extra. Yeah, especially when you're charging going from two three hundred dollars and two hundred, and you're just putting two capsule toys and like. So we're gonna like how many how what's the quality of these capsule toys? They must be fucking really nice looking fucking capsule <laughs> toys that cost a hundred dollars each. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, with the Toe Jam and Earl Kickstarter, that had the. The Toe Jam, the Earl, and the the spaceship, I think, cost less than two hundred dollars combined, and those are nice vinyl figures, not small little plastic capsule toys. So for exactly. like, yeah, so for like a hundred, I think it was like a hundred and eighty or something for the Toe Jam and Earl figures com- compared to, and you could get the. See what they need to do is they need to take a page from the uh, Toe Jam and Earl Kickstarter and have that sort of uh, reward store where you can add things on. So for example, if I'm if I'm dropping sixty on the physical game. They should say, you know what, for $50 more, you get the art book and the CD. I'd be like, okay. Yeah, they should have let. They should have just literally opened a store with this kind of stuff and, like, uh, put the stuff at an all right price. Like, uh, oh, I want to, like, uh, buy the game. Yeah. Call, 60 bucks right there. And then I want to buy the fucking capsule toys. I don't know, do a decent price, like $25 each. And that's it. Like, I like. I don't like this whole, like, oh, we're putting it in tears, and this is, like, $200 more. And, I mean, I sound like I'm complaining and being selfish, but really I'm saying this because I want them to make as much money as possible. So if they were to say, hey, guys, for 100 bucks you get the game, the CD, and the art book, or if they were to say, we're going to open a little store and you can buy the stuff extra, that would bring in so much more money. Like, imagine saying it's the ultimate Shenmue print and – music edition for 100 bucks yeah because not everybody wants uh digital stuff yeah or not everybody wants to spend money like digital stuff is always going to be there yeah so i think a lot of people were more interested in the physical stuff that's not going to be available anymore after the kickstarter yeah yeah exactly so and what do you think about the three thousand dollar jack lit replica <laughs> it looks actually you know um no offense to uh uh, insert coin. Actually, you know what? They've never given me anything free. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no offense to them, but the jacket on this Kickstarter looks like the jacket from the game. The um, I have a feeling that the one they showed off, or you know, when they announced it, is the actual 14 year old jacket that Yuzuki owns, <laughs> and they're just gonna like. They're, they haven't done any replicas yet, and they're just showing you what it's gonna look like. I guess they could, but. I feel like if that's the picture they're going to show, then you're going to get a legitimate, um, you know, uh, uh, a replica. replica jacket with patches. That was my big problem. The um, the insert coins one, it, it looks nice, but I think it looks a little too dark, and I think it looks more like a tracksuit than a jacket. And the the none of the patches oh, yeah, are definitely. real; they're printed on. And I know insert coins yeah, yeah. said these are original assets. That's awesome that they're original assets, but they're not patches. All right, is he trying to assume that like the Yuzuki one is not original assets? Yeah, yeah, the you know the one the creator of the game and shit. Yeah, yeah that's not original. Yeah, uh, three thousand yeah. though that that is a lot. Um, again, uh, kind of going uh, the other direction. I think between five hundred and three thousand, they could do a lot more uh, tiers. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, they could do a thousand dollar tier and say. I don't know. Include all the all the stuff from 500, and then throw in like, I don't know, something else. They they got ideas, I'm sure, but they haven't. I don't know. I just, I just feel like the lower tiers you don't get a lot. The higher tiers you get a lot, and there's nothing in between, and there's nothing really for the earlier ones. So it's, I f- I feel like they could be making a lot more money than they are. I have a feeling they're gonna start announcing more stuff with as feedback comes in. I think somebody posted on our forums that they said they had like over 4,000 messages the first day. Yeah, one of those is from and us. It's like, yeah, and it's us, uh, us emailing them. Yeah, me asking for so, an interview. <laughs> they're asking for they're asking you for an interview. You was like, no, not them. No. No. Oh, second no, bits. Uh, no. Well, I mean, I I, I wouldn't uh, blame him if he says no, considering that he's getting like all these big sites already uh, interested in him again. Yeah. You know what I mean, like. I, I've seen like Shimmy three articles from sites that like never even talked about Shimmy before, you know. Mm-hmm. Since considering they're so you know young, but uh, let's yeah let's talk about the next point here. Um, yeah, it you wrote it. It seems that the uh, the Shenmue three Kickstarter had a plan for way more than two million dollars, having extended stretch goals. 
how much money do you think it will need? Um, how much money do you think the the game will need? I think it will need more than two, ten million dollars. Yeah. Because I mean, um, I think uh, like ten million dollars, I think would make a solid, decent enough game with like not state of the art graphics or anything. But because uh, I mean, they said I think that The Witcher Three costs thirty two million dollars. Uh, so I would say about ten to fifteen million dollars would be a pretty decent budget for that game, especially considering. It's a Kickstarter game. Yeah, at the moment, um, I think we're going to talk about the... Oh, actually, yeah, we're going to talk about the stretch goals, too. I, I missed that, but um, we can kind of combine that here. Right now, they've uh, revealed up to $5 million, which is only for the Baisha village. And it looks like at $5 million, that village will be complete. It will be uh, expanded. It's going to have missions, quests, events, Um I guess, character perspective system. I'm not sure what that is. Um, maybe like first person view mode and stuff. Maybe. So, but right now that's one of the three villages. So if we, if we think, all right, from 3.5 to, or actually from four to five, we've gotten the Baisha village. If, if it's every other million and 7 million gets all the villages, that would be great. I'm just hoping that it's not like every 5 million to the point where it's like 15 million requires is required to hit all the stretch goals for the game. That would suck. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is, uh, like, I, I understand how they're doing it, you know? Like, if you go up to somebody and you're like, give me 15 fucking million dollars right now, they're going to be like, it's a lot of fucking money, I don't think we could do it, you know? Yeah. But yeah. if you tell them $2 million, that seems very attainable, you know? It's a very slow risk. Yeah. So I can see why they did it that way. Um, and it seems to be working for them, considering it was uh, one of the fastest funded Kickstarters ever. Yeah. Well, what what's your? They wouldn't have got. They wouldn't have gotten the fastest Kickstarter funded if it was fifteen million dollars up front. What is your opinion on these skill these systems that they're putting out here as stretch goals, but they're not explaining it? Like why mm. the rapport system, for example? What is that? We've already reached it, but yeah, they're not exactly. telling us what it is. Yeah, they they're not telling us what it is. I guess they're trying to keep it a secret. But Probably to get uh, tell to us introduce what these later to the press. Tell us what these stretch goals are, so we want to meet them. For example, three point five million skill tree system. Huh? Cool. What is it? I think it's, uh, it's. I think it's very interesting that like I'm not trying to like belittle the people, but like there's a lot of stuff they're not telling people. Yeah. And they've been very secretive about, and uh, I think that just kind of, I think that the that the Kickstarter just kind of misran. And I'm surprised at how successful the Kickstarter actually is for how misran it is. Like, I see a bunch of questions that don't get answered all the time. It's like they're not really being as transparent compared to, like, that Bloodstained or whatever yeah. uh, Castlevania Kickstarter. It's just I, I want this Kickstarter to do really, really well, and I'm just hoping that it it they start to remedy these things and explain them because they can't run on that excitement high for the next 30 days. You know, in the next week, people are going to be saying, oh – What's the what's mini games times five? What games? What's infiltration yeah, mission? Exactly. Yeah. Like, I mean, we're, like, what kind of mini games are you gonna make? To you're gonna make five separate mini games, or you're gonna make like <laughs> darts and then try to like change the rules and make it a f five mini games of darts what? using the same assets? What if we reach it and then like, he's like, there will now be five dart boards in the in in the village? It, it's exactly. They could just make like five different dark games and use the same dartboard and say that's five games right there you yeah. got it yeah so so again i think it needs to just, be more clear yeah need to be more clear so I, I i guess if we're keeping a list of things they need to do they need to make more stretch goals or not more stretch goals more rewards that cater to both the low end and the high end to, to get themselves more money the second one is they need to be more clear about what these stretch goals are obviously Subtitles that makes sense, but rapport system, rapport system, we've we've met it. We don't even know what it is, but we're getting it. So yay! You, fuck yeah! I can't wait to fucking try it out. Yeah, kids on the schoolyard right now, they're like, hey, you see rapport system? Oh man, like Rio's <laughs> gonna like rap. I just can't wait. This game sounds exciting. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, should we move on to the next bit here? Yeah, it seems that uh, uh, Sega actually uh, worked with Yu Suzuki to give him uh, to license out Shinmu 3. And this has kind of been like a, a movement that started online, you know, uh, give you the license. Yeah. 
And uh, did you ever think that, well, technically Sega didn't give him the license, but they licensed the license to him. You ever think that was going to happen? I I mean, I remember when the give you, give you the Shenmue license started becoming a hashtag. And I, I kind of butted heads with a few fans in the community just because I, I thought that was a little too weird and specific. And I, I, I mean, I think I talked about this before where I said, why don't you guys do something like save Shenmue? And then they fucking did. So yeah, yeah. thank you. No, I don't. I th- was it Take me? credit for everything. You, you made it happen, Barry. Was it? I'm going to look back. <laughs> I'm going to look back and see if I said, hey, you guys should use the save Shenmue hashtag. And then I'm going to look at the use of that hashtag. And if I predate it. I'm taking all the credit, and I want my dinner. All right, man. You heard it here first. <laughs> I want my dinner with uh, with Yuzuki? Ryo Hazuki. Ryo Hazuki. Oh. Yeah. You're gonna do an interview with him, or what? No, sit down and eat with him. I don't know. We'll drink you, some. You're gonna ask him uh, why you did? He didn't bang in Zomi. Yeah, man. What? That no Zomi, man. <laughs> Come uh, on, man. You know she wanted to. She's in Canada uh, now. Um, oh well, yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I always thought it was just kind of misleading because for example give you the le- the Shenmue license give it to him like that's that's a big thing to ask for that's asking Sega to lose all of their marketing or their um licensing for the game which they've already done they've done the statue they've done the insert coin stuff but then I I was told that really they wanted to lend li- license out the game to him and I was like well that's yeah. that's different that's different that's what they did here and that's what I thought that they they should have done so but then again, license Shenmue to Suzuki doesn't sound as good as a hash, hashtag, I guess. Um, I, I want, think it's also funny. Yeah. I was gonna say I think it's also funny that people uh, people like I saw some people posting that like Sony now owns the Shenmue license <laughs> and the like Sega never renewed the license, so Sony took it from them. And it's like, dude, who's who's making up all these stories like come on guys let's let's get uh let's get with it you know yeah yeah like like i saw people just assuming things like from the kickstarter like that sony was funding the whole fucking project and then they're just trying to take more money from consumers yeah get, get out of here guys but yeah uh the license works sega owns the ip yeah they get a profit of fucking shimmy 3 because it's their ip and the, we get the game yeah. Do you do you think they hey, no risk for Sega? I know it sounds kind of scummy. I guess people think. <laughs> do you think? But they did put in a lot of money. Yeah. Do you think they made him? Too. Do you think they made him pay for it, or do you think they just gave it to him? I have a feeling that they just licensed it out. I think didn't the guy say that we had one time they got the Sega license that they charged him like thirty grand? Yeah, but would would you I, think? I'm pretty sure that's something that Yuzuki and his uh, investors could afford. Do you think Nagoshi though? Because I'm sure he he played a role in this. Do you think he, on good faith, just said, you know what, let's just give it to him. He's done so much for us. Nah, he he he's all about the money, that's man. That's true. He probably sat there and he's like forty five thousand dollars now cash. He's probably cash. thinking, how how much does a tan cost? He's like, <laughs> he's all these guys gonna tan me all all year. Yeah, right. How much is a year of tans? That's how much we're charging him. No, but um, forty-five thousand dollars. I mean, come on, uh, good guys. Sega were good guys about this. They're they're not. He said years ago they'll let me make the game. I just need to find funding, and he did. He found Sony to help him with the marketing and to get the word out there. He got Kickstarter, and I'm sure he has some other deals that he just can't discuss due to, uh, you know, legal reasons. Um, I I don't know if I'm jumping ahead, but I I did want to talk about. Uh, um, that whole who's funding the game? Are we going to get to that as well? Um, we we well, you can just add it right here. I mean, let's talk about who's funding the game. I mean, we know uh, Sony said they're funding some of the game. Yeah, that's the quote. Uh, personally, I think Sony's just um, I think Sony's just taking care of that they get a, a console exclusive. I have a feeling. Yeah. You know, they, they support them on uh, porting the game over to PS4, help them put it on the store. They're most likely publishing it on the store, mm-hmm. doing all the work, probably going to do all the support work for it, and they're probably uh, going to give them development kits. Yeah. That's what I think. Now, I mean, what what a, I don't understand the problem people have where they say, well, why should I give money to it? Sony's helping. I don't understand that. Yeah, there's still people bitter about the Sony PS2 rivalry, I guess. I don't get it. It's like let's say it's someone's birthday and you say, "Hey George, are you are you giving uh, 
Are you giving this guy some some gifts for his birthday? Yeah. Well, then why the fuck should I give him a gift? You're giving him one. Yeah, exactly. Like, and I think in the end of the day, it's like I think it's like Sony giving them money would just make a better project. Yeah. For us, because they're going to be putting their money, we're putting our money in. I mean, it could, more funding. It could be a situ- project. It could be a situation where it's like Sony's going to put in, let's say, five to ten thousand. But they're also relying on the Kickstarter to put in five to ten thousand, and then they're relying on some other investors to put in five to ten thousand. I mean, it could be one of those situations where it's like, you know, we're getting, we're aiming to have, let's say, I'm saying thousand, sorry, million. Let's say they, yeah. they, they, they are, <laughs> we already reached that. Um, let's say it is a situation where they're like, we need thirty million. We'll get ten from Sony, ten from this other one, ten from Kickstarter. And, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that's the case, but if that was the case, would do you think people would be a little more receptive to it? Because I, I certainly I mean, I don't have a problem with it now, but I certainly would understand that sort of thing where it's like we're, we're counting on thirds or 25 percent of Kickstarter. You know, I, well, I think people just want to know how much Sony's uh, funding and uh, they're not going to tell us. Obviously, that's not <sighs> how the, uh, this kind of works. Like, I think people wanted to know how much Sega's making off the game. They. This is not stuff you people could talk about. I don't want to sound like an asshole, but I feel like the internet now people. You want to know? No, 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 no. The opposite. I feel like the internet now is full, so full of people who are like, you need to be completely transparent. Tell us everything. It's like you know what? That's not how business works. They, you know, there there are deals going on all the time where they say, don't tell people how much this costs. Don't tell how people how many we sold. You know, it's like. It, it, I, yeah, I'm sure that I, I know that can be frustrating, but that's just how the world works. Not everything is out there. Yeah, and I, and I don't mind them not telling me how much Sony's funded, but like, uh, I kind of wish they would tell me how much they want to fund on on at least on the Kickstarter. That's but fair. I just thought it was like, we think we need this much. I think assuming, I think a lot of people started assuming stuff when they heard Sony's name pop up that they're doing some funding. Yeah, and there was this weird ass like movement of people that were like. Don't fund the game because Sony will fund the rest of it. Forbes, yeah, and that's where I'm coming yeah. from. That's where I'm coming from with this because let's say Sony is saying we are giving a flat amount of money. We're giving you whatever five million. Let's just or we'll get, let's say Sony's saying we're giving you ten million. That's it. And then Kickstarter only raises two million. That's twelve million. Now let's say Kickstarter raises ten million. That's twenty million. I don't think Sony, whatever they're giving, if they are giving anything, is dependent on what the Kickstarter raises. I don't think that's the case. I don't think it's like a charity drive where they're like, we'll match it and double it, you know, something stupid like that. Yeah, it also looks like this is a a 100% managed by Yu Suzuki and his people. This is not like Sony's in there going like, you know, it'd be cool if you guys put like an Uncharted reference, you know? Right. So Put Parappa in there for the rapper system. Parappa Parappa the rapper. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure this is what's happening, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm okay with it. I mean, somebody had to bring the game. Sega didn't want to bring it. Microsoft obviously didn't want to bring it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why I said obviously with Microsoft, but isn't it? They don't owe to bring it, but isn't it interesting that in the history of Shenmue, how many uh, I guess systems uh, it was? Co- yeah, and console developer. I mean, you look at the history of Shenmue. Sega as a console developer was behind it. Microsoft as a console developer was behind it. Sony. Nintendo is nowhere to be seen. I don't think Nintendo and Shenmue ever once cross over in the history of the game. I'm trying to think, except for maybe Rio on All Stars Racing, you know. But I'm actually surprised at Sony, but it, it looks like Sony is doing it for PR. Yeah. You know, announcing it at on stage, and it did. Not only was it good PR for them, but it was also uh, oh my. good for the Kickstarter. I mean. You know how many Sony fans that probably never played the game decided, like, oh, I'm going to fucking fun that game. Yes. Yeah. Everybody's going crazy around me. I don't know what the fuck. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And since I'm pissing people off, let me say this to people who are moaning about having to buy a PS4. You have two and a half years. So don't worry. You got time. Yeah. D- <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. Or buy a PC. You yeah, know? I don't think it's going to take that much power to run it. Yeah. Yeah. Get a good Mac yeah. book. Um, but yeah. Let's see what else we can talk about. Oh, okay. Uh, Sega isn't really involved in the project, so that means that Sega parts of the game might not make it in. What was your favorite thing, like, Sega-related thing in Shimu? I got to say the capsule toys. Because... I think a lot of people are. 
thanks to that, I was turned on to so many other Sega franchises. Before that, you know, when I play the game, I'd get these guys, and I'm like, what are these, like, Lego characters? No, they were the Bonanza Brothers, you know, or I'd get, like, um, this weird, like, uh, uh, <laughs> Mega Drive with a 32X, and it was, like, it had arms and legs. Like, what the hell was that? Um, and then yeah, I, I feel like Shenmue, you know, I, I know a lot of Shenmue fans kind of distance themselves from Sega, but I feel like to be a Shenmue fan makes you a Sega fan because there is just it's so steeped in Sega history in terms of like the collectibles and the Virtua Fighter uh, uh, references and moves and the arcade games. Um, and for me, Shenmue is just such a gateway uh, game for so many other Sega properties. Um, now, having said that, I feel like Shenmue 3 won't suffer from that because I feel like that was a thing of the past. I, I don't think the game needs to rely so much, so heavily on other Sega IPs. It would be kind of funny if the game kicked off where Ryo's like running through the forest with Shenhua and he goes, Oh no. And she's like, what is it Ryo? And he goes, oh, I dropped my capsule toys. And she's like, I guess you'll have to start over collecting them. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> you know, or she, he drops them and he goes, you're a fucking adult man. Stop. <laughs> He's crying for your toys. That would no, be a uh, great scene if he if you go over to it and she stops you. She's like, Rio, what are you doing? We have to get going. And he's like, you're right. And it's like the end of Toy Story 3 where you've grown up. It would be even better if she looks at the fucking camera and literally tells the player to stop crying about <laughs> not having capsule toys. Yeah, right. Um, uh, but no, um, yeah, capsule toys were cool. I really like the arcade games, you know. Oh, for sure. Uh, that that was always pretty cool. Like no other game really did that. It, I think people don't understand that. Like, we went from like Metal Gear Solid that didn't have any faces and was kind of like bare bones, to Shimu that had like detailed NPCs, a weather system, this like fighting, like satisfying fighting system, and like uh, lots of voice acting questions and like it's pre- it's pretty crazy jump. Oh for sure. And so, uh... I won't, I'll go on. I don't think it's going to have the same impact that it's going to have that it had on us when we were growing up, but I think it'll be a, nice for us to finish the story. Oh. I think that's the thing. Oh, yeah. And on the subject of the arcade games, too, it was not only n- new and surprising to have games within a game, though I, I think didn't Animal Crossing do that? I think they did. Yeah, but I think I don't think it was out in America yet. Okay. I think it was like a Japanese only game. Yeah. At that point, it was a Nintendo 64 had an Animal Crossing game, but it was like people Japan only. Yeah. Pe- and you had to have some like add-on. Yeah, people who didn't grow up with the Dreamcast and weren't like uh, playing Shenmue at the time, they might not understand how crazy it was to play a game within the game. And on top of that, from uh, the I guess the the extras menu or from the passport disc you could access these games without going into the game. So, you know, just a few years before Shenmue came out, stuff like Space Harrier um, and other arcade games, they were getting standalone disc releases on the Saturn. Like, you, in, at least in Japan, you, you would buy one disc and it would have one of these arcade games on it. So the fact that just a few years later, you get this huge uh, uh, game, this action, full reactivized entertainment game, <laughs> and and you're getting you're getting like four free three or four free arcade games on top of that like even the Dreamcast had a uh, release called Yu Suzuki GameWorks that had only four games and it was a full retail release so the fact that Shenmue basically had almost all those except for Power Drift Shenmue two I think had all of them except for Power Drift that's awesome that was awesome at the time but I don't think it's necessary yeah, sure. now I don't think it's needed now I don't think it's needed anymore but like um... I have a feeling that this game is going to cross very rocky roads when it's like there's so much emotion and like uh, anticipation. Yeah. I've been building up for like 14 years that I, I kind of feel bad for Yu Suzuki when he has all the spotlights on him. And like, uh, so if anything goes wrong, it's going to be like magnified like 300,000 times. <laughs> um, kind of following up with that uh, question about the Sega items, what are you prepared to miss out on in Shenmue 3? Something that was in the past games that might not be in this game. What are you prepared to lose? Um, it feels like they're just going to drop everything that we knew from the past games. Like, the other one had, like, you had to work. You had to, like, uh, you know, uh, discuss, t- talk to people. It looks like now you're you're getting this whole, like, oh, all those human things. Like, I don't know, like... Uh, 
If you played uh, the last chapter of two, like uh, when you talked to what's her name? Um, Shenhua. That girl. What's her name? Shenhua. Shenhua. What a weird <laughs> name. Uh, Too close to Shenhua. And you talked to her about how like uh, you talked to her about Naomi, and she's like she sells flowers, and it's just like such a weird thing. You mean her, like you mean Nozomi, right? You're not talking about the the, seg- Nozomi, sorry, the Sega sorry, arcade sorry. board. Shenhua. Yes, Rio. Did you ever play a Naomi game? <laughs> she talks about how the you talk about Nozomi and how uh, she. Uh, she sells flowers, and then she's like, like the whole concept of selling flowers to to her is like, uh, weird. Yeah. I have a feeling you're gonna start entering a world where like, social material material objects don't matter. So I'm assuming there's not gonna be very much uh, arcades, very much uh, capsule toys, maybe hunting, yeah, stuff like that. That'd be pretty interesting. What do you think about um the uh, fighting mechanics being? stripped or completely changed do you think we're going to have the the battle system we had probably probably not but uh i would like them to do like a an updated version of it for sure but like i don't i, I don't know i don't think it is i didn't uh, assume you one have a the virtual fighter 3 fighting system yeah yeah i don't think it's gonna have it that's my thing on it. Yeah. But it might be a tier to have it uh, a detailed battle system. Do you want a different game? Because we know that Shenmue 2 kind of took everything in Shenmue 1 and improved it. But I, I part of me doesn't want Shenmue 3 to just be Shenmue 2 again. I'm open to a brand new game. No, I told you, like, I would want a different experience. Like I said, like, if it's dropping materialistic items and stuff and going into the forest and being more about being rural... I'm okay with that because I mean we already experienced the big city in Shimmy too. Yeah. So I would like to like you know go with like less people and more interacting with what's her name and uh, exploring I guess that. Do you remember the game? Yeah, in Shenmue two, I I might be misremembering this, but you would walk with her and then just at random times you could start up a conversation with her. Correct. Yeah. I feel like yeah, yeah. Shenmue three. I think we're going to be able to move Rio around like we did in the first game. I think we're going to be able to check our inventory, uh, look at things. However, I think that instead of investigating and collecting items, it's going to be building relationships with a small amount of non-playable characters and dialogue trees and much more of... um, Alpha Protocol kind of gameplay, if anything. I don't think Yu Suzuki knows of Alpha Protocol, though it feels like that's what he's leaning towards. And it's kind of funny that <laughs> that kind of gameplay is what it sounds like he's going for, because Alpha Protocol, if people have played that, know that there is a Sa- Sega Saturn in the, the main character's Reference? house. Yeah, just like in yeah. Shenmue. So it, it would be fitting. And I wouldn't mind that. That was my favorite part of Alpha Protocol. The decisions? The decisions, and I think that applied to a Shenmue game could be really cool. I mean, not like a dating, not like a, um, I guess... Uh, I, I want a dating simulator. Sakura Tyson, yeah, where it's like a dating simulator, more gaining people's trust and... Um, and then backstabbing them? Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, right. So, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I agree. I think it should be changed in pace, but uh, I could see it. Uh, I could see people never being satisfied with the release product anyway. Yeah. I'm just saying... Yeah. Uh, it seems that, uh, okay, um, do you think Sega should release a Shimmy 1 and 2 HD collection? Oh, absolutely. Or, eight, or 1 HD, 2 HD. I mean, the, the eBay pricing right now is pretty uh, on point. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, let's talk about that. They haven't announced anything. Sega's <laughs> actually been kind of silent about the whole thing, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, they have said on the Kickstarter page that it's not in their hands. Despite some uh, Sony run, Sony fan run blogs stating that he owns the IP, which is completely wrong. Um, but um, it's in Sega's hands. Uh, from what we've heard, both from friends of ours online and uh, other sources, it's it's having to do with rights issues. And people might say, "Oh, Sega owns the game," but they don't own a lot of the um, third party, uh, I guess, development tools or um engines yeah so i think for a game that's that old it's going to take a lot of research to find out who owns what because they don't want to bring a game out and then someone comes out of the shadows and goes excuse me but that element you used in the game 
you didn't pay for the rights for, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask for a healthy cut of those profits, or sue you, or ask to take the game down. You don't want that. Yep. Yeah, that could be a problem. I think it it would probably need to be like redone from the ground up, and that's probably not going to be worth it. But I think at this point, there's such a ruckus online that it's probably going to be worth it because, uh, I mean, before you didn't know what you know. 14 years later, if people even cared, you know. Yeah. But now that you see mainstream sites talking about it and like the local news talking about it, like everybody knows this is happening. Yeah. What's probably the best time looking at those eBay prices? What are your thoughts on those eBay prices, by the way? Uh, I think it's uh, I kind of expected right when they announced Shimmy Three that I'm like, holy shit, eight eBay is going crazy right now. <laughs> I think it's bullshit. I think um, uh, the Japanese version of Shenmue, that's like a ten, fifteen dollar game. The American version. Now it's a hundred and fifty dollar game. I mean, come on, the American version of Shenmue, I bought one uh, six months ago because I wanted another copy. Uh, for fifteen bucks. So yeah, I know. I bought. I bought a. I bought a like brand new, almost like literally like just taken out of the package. Mm-hmm. Uh, last year for like fifteen bucks too, and it was like really, 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 really good condition. So yeah. now you're like a shitty like it's been under the bed for ten years, a copy, and it's like a hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. So a uh, word of advice to people who want to buy the game, go to your local game shops first because I don't think they've been jacking the price up at local game stores um yet at least um so yeah be on the hunt for it and don't don't give in don't pay 150 dollars don't don't do that please because that just makes the problem worse yep don't buy it (laughs) don't ever play it ever ever no but uh when do you think uh shimmy three will finally come out um i think it's going to release I, end of 2017. I that seems like a fair date. Man, I hope it comes out in uh in the uh 2017. But even then, it's still fucking a long time, dude. Like when I saw the Shinvi three thing, I'm like, when they like when they did like a ma- like a microsecond of the Shinvi song in the Sony E3 conference, and they knew it was gonna happen, I was like, I hope they re- say it's gonna come out this year. That'd be great. <laughs> but I have to wait. This sucks. Well, what is um? Let's see. What's the next bit you wanted to talk about? Oh, well, that's it. I I think I'm done. We've already done it for an hour. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that that covers it. Um, and I you do an outro and just edit this part out. <laughs> no, I, I I um I guess what are your your final thoughts at least uh, at the point we are right now? Like what um what are your final thoughts? My final thoughts is uh. Fun Shimu for what like the the money you want. Don't try to go for the fancy rewards. I guess if you can't afford them. Uh, if Shim if Sony funding it is a problem for you, nobody's forcing you to like give mu- use Suzuki money and support the game. You could always wait till the final product comes out because they already got funded anyway. Yeah. Technically. <laughs> but if you want a better game. Exactly. Then you should probably fund it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, just to echo that, like, if, yeah, that's a great, you know, don't, spend what you feel like spending. If you have any issues with the Sony thing, ignore it. But like we've said, just because Sony's helping does not mean that Sony's like matching. The bad guy. Or they're not the bad guy. They're, I mean, we don't know what they're doing, but um, given the Kickstarter seems pretty dependent on these stretch goals. If you want to support the game, support the game now, because if you're not going to support it and wait two years and buy it when it comes out, you're probably going to get a lesser game. That's just how it is. You know? That's pretty That's pretty well said. <laughs> I don't want to be a, a jerk, but that's how it is. Um, I don't know, too, if, if you've heard my cat meowing. She's very excited for Shenmue. Oh, man, they need to bring the cat simulator back. Yeah, right. Um, actually, I, I don't want to get into another tangent, but that's interesting because, you know, that's that's an element that was not in Shenmue 2, was feeding a kitten. So it, it's, yeah. it feels like there's always – he always has these – Yu Suzuki always has these little ideas. He throws them in the game, but they never stick. So I guess my other final thought, at least for this Shenmue-related podcast, is – kind of unlearn what Shenmue is to you. Don't don't think that Shenmue 3 is going to be too 
with some improvements. It could be a very different game, and I think it is going to be a very different game, and I'm hoping it's a very different game, because I want, you know, as much as I love the first two games, I want Yu Suzuki to give me a new experience. I don't want more of the same. I've heard uh, rumors since a long time ago that it was you're supposed to have superpowers or some stuff. Oh my god, we didn't even get I think into it, that. I think, I think the rumors started because of the Shimmy Online game. But and the flying sword. Let's not forget that. That dude, I see swords flying all the time, <laughs> That's dude. True. It doesn't mean it's supernatural. Yeah. Scientific explanation. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> um, I guess you know what we'll talk about magic and flying swords on our uh, the next time we talk about Shenmue, and there I think there will be a next time. I think once the Kickstarter wraps, let's reconvene, hold another swing and report show. Um, I know the the swing and report show has become mainly an interview show, but we do like to do these specials. Um, this was going to be we our. We do have a. Uh huh. We do have a, an interview plan soon. We do. So. We have a couple. Um, we have a few irons in the fire, but uh, um, yeah, I, I think uh, we're not going to be doing an E3 show just because there. This is really our E3 show. Um, yeah, like Sega wasn't really at E3 this year. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to mention too, um, that I will be hosting a panel at the Too Many Games convention in Oaks, PA. That's going to be on Saturday, the 27th, at 4.50 p.m. I'm going to be joined by David of Sonic Retro, and we are going to be talking about Sonic Extreme for maybe 20, 30 minutes, and then we're going to be uh, showing a premiere YouTube video from our show Hit Reset, run by Adam. And uh, he has a really cool episode planned with um, for uh, what's the, Wild Woody for the Sega CD. And he sounds sexy. Yeah, but what's really cool is he actually got people who worked on the game to contribute to the video. So he has the voice actor for Wild Woody, and he has the composer, um, I think, answering some questions. And he, I think he's going to try to get a guy who did QA on the game. So that that should be interesting. Um, if you like weird, actually, I think the the kind of the theme of the panel is weird obscure games that people don't really think of <laughs> or something like that but um it'll be fun yeah and and sonic extreme that uh is has like a weird online like a uh, fan base yeah even though it never came out yeah and it, it's interesting too that um sonic extreme development was occurring at the same time shenmue's development kind of was kicking off on the saturn so they're kind of tied together. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to show you how long Shimmy's been in development. I will say, George, uh, before we wrap up, when I was thinking of panels to do, I was very close to doing a Shenmue 3 panel, and I'm so glad I didn't because the whole thing would have been like, boy, it like, sucks. Like, oh, look at this guy piggybacking <laughs> off the fucking hype. No, if anything, it would have been like the whole panel would have been be, being like, what would Shenmue 3 would have been? What would it be like? Shame we're never going to see it. <laughs> I would have looked like a fucking idiot. Yeah, I know, especially if you just go through with it, you don't give a shit about the announcement. I don't you're scramble. Like, it's not going to hurt the panel. It's still going to be good. Yeah, I'll be like, all right, guys, just pretend that the game's not coming out because this is kind of... Uh, uh, but The whole fucking gimmick of the of the panel? Yeah, we're going to be giving away some prizes, too. I have a little bag of prizes sorted. We also have... Um, I reached out to Archie Comics, so they, if, if the uh, box of stuff arrives, I will be giving away some pretty cool... Pretty cool things. So yeah, come for the panel. Stay so if for you're the in prices. the area. Yeah. So you're in the area. Pass. Uh, drop by. Say hi. Yeah. Get free stuff. Yeah. Punch. Punch me for all the things George has, has said to you online. Um. And Corey is not going to go this time. No. Uh. Corey Maru. Patrick. I mean. AKA Patrick. He is not going this time. However, he's still planning his um convention this fall. His Sonic and Sega. Fan jam. So who's gonna pass out all the flyers? No one. This is our first flyerless uh, show, so we'll see how it goes. Really, you're not gonna do flyers? I can. I'm not. I don't live out there anymore. Damn. Yeah. Or you should have put a Craigslist listing for somebody to do it. No, seriously. Maybe I'll ask Adam because he's going the day before if he can print out like twenty and pass them around. I don't know. All right then. Um, all right. <laughs> oh, and this is a this is like a well. I mean, I'm gonna close it up. You want me to close it Go up? Go for it. And if you like this show, I mean, it's a little bit different. Let us know what you guys think about this kind of format. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next show. Yeah, we'll see you next episode, episode 80.
The Segabits Swinging Report Show is a production of Segabits. Segabits is a fan site that is not in any way officially affiliated with Sega. Sonic the Hedgehog and all Sega-related trademarks are copyright Sega. All other featured trademarks are the property of their respective owners. Don't forget to check out Segabits.com, and you can find us on all major social networks. Just search Segabits. 